The Cadwell and Lowe Club present Helminth Infection Promotes Colonisation Resistance via Type 2 Immunity by Deepshi Karamanan, Rohan Bokut, Ken Cadwell and Pung Lok. Inflammatory diseases have been increasing at an alarming rate for reasons that are unclear. This coincides with increased industrialization and decreased exposure to certain types of infections such as intestinal worms. Also known as the hygiene hypothesis, decreased infections could lead to a poorly developed immune system. Another possibility is that we've lost beneficial species of bacteria in our intestines and that these have been replaced by harmful ones. Patients who have Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, which are two types of inflammatory bowel disease or IBD, display an exaggerated immune response against the bacteria living in their intestine. This harmful immune response damages the intestine and causes symptoms such as diarrhea and intestinal pain. Understanding how intestinal worms and gut bacteria affect the immune response may lead to better ways of treating or preventing IBD. IBD affects over a million people in the United States alone. Interaction between the environment and our genes contributes towards the disease. We previously found that mice with a mutation in a gene called NOD2, like humans with mutations in NOD2, are more susceptible to developing intestinal disease. We also found that the disease was dependent on colonization by a common member of intestinal bacteria called Bacteroides vulgatus. These findings suggest that genetic factors and intestinal bacteria work together to cause IBD. But how does the presence of intestinal worms affect the incidence of IBD? We wanted to test the idea that intestinal worms could protect the nod 2 mutant mice from intestinal disease. Remarkably, we found that infected nod 2 mutant mice with worms reduced intestinal inflammation by replacing harmful bacteria with beneficial ones that block disease. First, the intestinal worms trigger the host immune response. Specialized cells of the immune system, called CD4 T cells, released chemicals known as the cytokines interleukin-13 and interleukin-4. These cytokines trigger the mucus-producing goblet cells in the intestine to increase in numbers and release more mucus to expel the worms. This increase in mucus creates an environment that favours the growth of specific protective bacteria known as clostridia. We found that in nod 2 mutant mice, clostridia can inhibit the growth of the inflammatory bacteria, Bacteroides vulgatus. This expansion of clostridia and reduction of Bacteroides vulgatus protected the nod 2 mutant mice from developing intestinal disease. We also looked in people that have intestinal worms to see if we could find similar changes to their gut bacteria. An indigenous Malaysian population known as the Orang Asli are commonly infected with intestinal worms. We looked at the gut bacteria of members of the Orang Asli before and after they were treated with deworming medication. Consistent with the mouse experiments, we found that when people are infected with worms, they have an increase in Clostridia communities. However, when worms were removed after deworming, there was an increase in Bacteroides bacteria. Even among people in the United States, when someone has more Clostridia, they often have less Bacteroides, further supporting our idea that Clostridia communities and Bacteroides communities compete against one another. In this study, we helped explain the hygiene hypothesis by showing that intestinal worms promote the growth of beneficial microbes such as Clostridia, which can then compete with potentially inflammatory bacteria such as Bacteroides in people that are particularly susceptible to Bacteroides because of their genetics. Our results also tied together two important aspects of IBD related to the changing modern environment alterations in the composition of our gut bacteria and intestinal worm infection. But how does this information help us develop a cure for IBD? Infecting people with intestinal worms may be dangerous, and although we might be able to develop safer worms, these may not be as effective in treating disease. Our results indicate that you can target the host response to the worms instead, to promote the colonisation of beneficial bacteria. 
Also, since not all IBD patients have the NOD2 mutation, it may be important to personalise the treatment and not treat all IBD patients the same way. To read more about this work, please see our paper published in Science. This work was performed at the Skorball Institute of Medicine and the Department of Microbiology at NYU. We would also like to thank all of our collaborators. Our studies would not be possible without their invaluable contributions. We would also like to thank our funding agencies for making all of this research possible.